Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, a good distance from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. And it came about that everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. And it came about, whenever Moses went out to the tent, that all the people would arise and stand, each at the entrance of his tent, and gaze after Moses until he entered the tent. And it came about, whenever Moses entered the tent, the pillow of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent, and the Lord would speak with Moses. When all the people saw the pillow of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would arise and worship, each at the entrance of his own tent. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses returned to the camp, his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from his tent. Exodus 33, 7 through 11. We are God's friends. God's love tells us he is friendly and his word assures us that he is our friend and wants us to be his friends. No man with a trace of humility would first think that he is a friend of God, but the idea did not originate with man. Abraham would never have said, I am God's friend, but God himself said that Abraham was his friend. The disciples might well have hesitated to claim friendship with Christ, but Christ said to them, you are my friends. Modesty may demur at so rash a thought, but audacious faith dares to believe the word and claim friendship with God. We do God more honor by believing what he has said about himself and having the courage, having the courage to come boldly to the throne of grace than by hiding in self-conscious humility among the trees of the gardens. We are God's friends. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. Titus 1, 1 through 4. We need each other. The life of the Apostle Paul consisted of much traveling and a very irregular schedule. His body consequently received very little rest. The emotional and spiritual tensions he had to deal with were much worse than his physical lack of rest. Paul often encountered misunderstanding and suspicion. Some people even doubted his apostolic mission. It is easy to understand why Paul felt in danger of becoming disheartened. God the Father, however, knew what his child needed. He comforted Paul through the person of Titus, who had been converted through Paul's preaching and later became his co-laborer, 2 Corinthians 7, 5 through 16. Through a meeting with fellow Christians, Titus had recently received new courage and joy himself. Therefore, he was in a cheerful mood when he visited Paul. 
Titus' friendship brought Paul rest. Their time together turned out to be spiritual and physically refreshing to Paul and a stimulus to tackle his work again with renewal vigor. The sense of rest that one person can convey to another can hardly be overestimated. People need one another, not only in important things such as functioning in society, church, and the home, but also in small things such as when feeling discouraged or feeling depressed, we need each other. We cannot do without one another. We are privileged when we have friends who meet such needs. Lord, thank you for like-minded friends who attend to my needs. Thank you for the encouragement and stimulus they present. Father, help me to detect this need in others and be humble enough to seek help myself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for letting me know we need each other.